The ceremony just a few feet from where Yvonne Johnson's family discovered the child's skull behind their home. I got a picture in my phone and I just look at it all the time. But I haven't uh, forgotten her and I won't forget. I hope and pray it be soon because somebody's living a bad life. Alabama police, with the aid of DNA technology and experts, were finally able to identify the remains of a young girl after more than a decade. Welcome to Young Black Lives Honored. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Let me know your thoughts about this case in the comment section below, and I encourage you to leave heartwarming messages for those who are still reeling from this loss. On January 28, 2012, Opelika police responded to Brookhaven Trailer Park, located at 1775 Hearst Street, following a report of skeletal remains having been found. A small skull was located in the yard of a residence, while the majority of the bones were located a few feet into the wood line behind the trailer and the adjacent lot. During a search of the area, a pink long sleeve shirt with heart buttons and ruffles was found nearby on a creek bank and a small bundle of curly hair was also recovered. It is unknown if they were associated with the child. Her remains were sent to the FBI laboratory in Quantico, Virginia, where a medical examination was performed and they determined that she was a black girl between the ages of four and seven with black hair styled in cornrows. There was evidence she had been severely mistreated for years. A subsequent autopsy was performed and more than 15 individual fractures, including to the skull, arms, legs, shoulders, and ribs were attributed to blunt force trauma. These injuries all had evidence of healing and happened sometime prior to her passing. The medical examiner also suggested that the child may have been malnourished and blind in her left eye due to a fracture in her eye stocking. The unidentified child was referred to as the Opelika baby Jane Doe. Police made two efforts over the years to find the child's identity using DNA technology, but were met with roadblocks due to the condition of her remains. In 2016, authorities released a clay bust of what the child's face may have looked like when she was alive. The reconstruction resulted in a response from members of Greater Peach Church, located about three miles from where her body was found. A former vacation Bible school teacher was going through photos when a little girl caught her eye. She provided the photos, which were taken in the summer of 2011, to law enforcement, who used software to enhance the images, hoping someone in the public would recognize the girl. She would have been four or five years old at the time. The teacher noted the child had an unkempt appearance and had trouble communicating with other children, so she was quiet and stayed to herself. The teacher did not recall her name, and the church did not formally register children, so there were no records for reference. In 2017, the University of South Florida Institute for Forensic Anthropology and Applied Science performed isotope testing on her bones, which indicated she lived in the southeastern United States. On January 28, 2012, the body of a young black female, believed to be between three and six years old, was found in a wooded area in Opelika, Alabama. Since that time, the Opelika Police Department has been searching for her identity. Ten years following the discovery, the community in Opelika gathered in the, at the time, still unidentified child's honor. One, two, three. 
Light pink balloons released in honor of baby Jane Doe. The ceremony just a few feet from where Yvonne Johnson's family discovered the child's skull behind their home on January 28, 2012, 3,653 days ago. I think I got a picture in my phone and I just look at it all the time. But I haven't uh, forgotten her and I won't forget her. It's one of those cases that gets you in the gut. And, you know, I think it's a way for them to show respect to her and, you know, uh, make sure she knows that uh, we're not, we've not forgotten and, and we're still fighting every day to, you know, bring this case to a conclusion. We all here are her family. We here are her people. We're the ones who love her. We're the ones who miss her. And we're the ones who mourn her. And we'll do that until the day comes where we can meet her face to face and we'll know her name without a doubt. I don't doubt for a second that we'll figure out who this little girl is. I hope and pray it be soon. Because somebody's living a bad life. And I wish they would just come forward right now. It's not too that late. That same month? DNA was further extracted in attempts to retrieve DNA suitable for genealogy testing. Othram Labs successfully extracted DNA from the scalp and Astria Labs from the hair. A comprehensive profile was built from Othram's sample and the profile was uploaded to a database. From there, Dr. Barbara Ray Venter with Firebird Forensics Group used the genealogical profile to identify relatives and develop investigative leads. Nine months later, the child's father was identified. In January 2023, the Opelika Police Department announced they had identified the remains of Opelika's baby Jane Doe as Amor Jovia Wiggins, but that wasn't all. The investigation led to two arrests in Jacksonville, Florida, that of 50-year-old Navy soldier Lamar Vickerstaff Jr., Amor's biological father, and Ruth Vickerstaff, his wife. Both were charged with failure to report a missing child, and Lamar was also charged with felony fatality. A cold case that haunted detectives for years now cracked. The big break with the capture of two fugitives here in Jacksonville. The News for Jack's I team was there for the takedown as a specialized Jacksonville Sheriff's Office task force arrested Ruth Vickerstaff in a traffic stop near her north side home. After learning she was in custody, her husband, Lamar Vickerstaff, arrived at the scene and turned himself in. Lamar was a chief engine man in the Navy, based most recently in Mayport. The concern is fight or flight. At this point, he knows what he's done. We don't know everything. Is he going to go ahead and take that opportunity and just start on the run? JSO's Community Problem Response Unit, or CPR, had been watching the couple after getting a warrant from Opelika, arrest, Alabama the police. The couple appeared in court and were ordered to be held without bond. They waived their extradition and were held at the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office pending extradition to Lee County, Alabama. Lamar Vickerstaff. Good afternoon, sir. Well, good afternoon, y'all. Sir, I've got a signed waiver of extradition. Your past date for review is February 17th at 2 o'clock in J1 for review, sir. All right, thank you, y'all. Ruth Vickerstaff. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Ma'am, I've got the signed waiver um, of extradition. Your review date's going to be February 17th at 2 o'clock in J1. Thank you. A month prior, investigators visited Vicar staff at Mayport Naval Station in Jacksonville and notified him of his daughter's passing. He allegedly did not provide any information on the child's identity at the time. His wife Ruth, to whom he has been married since May 2006, just months after Amore was born, said she did not know Vicar Staff's daughter or who her mother was. On January 18, 2023, the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office and FBI agents were back on the scene at the trailer park where Amore's body was found in 2012. 
police confirmed they were serving a search warrant regarding the Wiggins case. Agents were observed standing on the mobile home's front porch and handling what appeared to be evidence bags. The area around the residence, along with the front and backyard, was seen blocked off with tape. That's horrific, honestly. That's, I don't even know what to think about that. Taylor Akers was one of several neighbors we spoke with today living near Vickerstaff's home. She says she's in complete shock that someone accused of a crime like this lived just a few doors down from her. You never know who's living right next door even. You have no idea what people are capable of. We spoke to another neighbor off camera who echoed the same sentiment. Neighbors say the Vickerstaffs didn't really come out of the house much and primarily kept to themselves. Nobody we spoke to knew either of them personally, but said it's a shocking Experts revelation were able for an to otherwise quiet community. several possible matches for Amora's mother, and detectives narrowed down the results to Sherry Wiggins, a native of Norfolk, Virginia, who was living in Maryland. In December 2022, detectives met with a 37-year-old who confirmed she was Amora's biological mother. She told authorities she had given birth to a baby girl named Amor Jovia Wiggins in January of 2006 and had spent the last 11 years looking for her. According to documentation provided by the woman, Lamar was Amor's father and him and Ruth obtained legal and physical custody of the child in 2009, at which time the mother's visitation was suspended. Documents also showed that Cherie has continuously paid child support to Lamar since 2009. She told police she had never heard about the Opelika baby Jane Doe and had been fighting the courts to modify the custody agreement so she could see her daughter, but to no avail. The big question here is, how could she have a biological mother that is paying child support for more than 10 years, but there's no contact. She doesn't ask to see any pictures of the child. Right. Now she had to reach out trying to get with the court to get custody or partial custody or supervised custody of the child and was uh, not allowed, uh, you know, and I mean, you live in a Navy town. I mean, he was, overseas a lot, he was on a ship a lot. During was, his lengthy you know, Navy Hawaii career, for a short time. Lamar resided in Norfolk, Virginia, Honolulu, Hawaii, and Jacksonville, Florida. However, he was born and raised in Opelika, Alabama. Detectives reached out to the school boards and pediatric clinics in several states where Lamar and Ruth resided and determined that Wiggins was never enrolled in school, never went to a doctor's visit, and was never reported missing. With this information, Opelika detectives met with the Lee County District Attorney's Office to determine charges related to Amor's passing. Y'all, the last thing that I want to say is this man that's standing to my right. He's like a dog on a biscuit. He has dedicated many years of his life in the pursuit of this investigation. Countless number of hours and days he'd be up here Supposed to go home at five o'clock. He's up here eight, nine, ten o'clock at night by himself working on this case. Coming in on the weekends by himself. The rest of these gentlemen over here, these detectives, the detectives that have been in and out of our investigative services division over the last 11 years. All the police officers that spent time following up leads, responding to scenes, standing by at search warrants. The level of dedication to this case I have never seen in my entire career. To see a group of men and women come together searching for a name. Many of us said that we did not want to leave our time at this police department until we had her name. And now we do.
Following the arrest, Sherry created a GoFundMe to quote, raise money to regain her life and give Amora a proper burial. The link can be found in the description below. Investigators announced that they still needed the public's help in gathering additional details regarding the suspect's relationships with Amor and their time spent in Alabama, Florida, and Virginia. If you have any information, I urge you to contact the Opelika Police Department Detective Division at 334-705-5220 are the secret witness hotline at 334-745-8665. Tips can also be anonymously submitted through the Opelika Police mobile app. It's a good day, but the work's not done. We still uh, need leads. We still need uh, people in the community to come forward. Uh, they know that they've seen a more Wiggins, uh, either in Baltimore, either in Norfolk, Virginia, Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, they know the vicar staffs. They know their kids. We need to talk to the people that know them so we can put some dots together uh, so we can get a good case so these people can definitely have justice. I do hope that justice is solved. May the family and friends of Amor Jovia Wiggins find solace in the happy memories and may her soul rest in perpetual peace. Thank you.